This episode of Saving History is sponsored by American Digger Magazine, for diggers and collectors of America's heritage. Subscribe today at americandigger.com. Saving History. I'm S.C. Digger. Well, due to the extreme temperatures that we've been experiencing around here and the fact that my son plays a rather extensive travel baseball schedule, we haven't had a whole lot of time to do much digging here lately. So what I wanted to do was go back into the archives and tell you a story about an experience that I had several years ago. Really, it's an experience that every relic hunter dreams of. And it all started with this little brass coin purse frame. So sit back and enjoy this episode of Saving History. In January of 2007, a good friend of mine, John Miles, invited me down to hunt a new tract of land he had gotten permission to search. John had already poked around a bit and had found several musket balls and a socket bayonet that appeared to be revolutionary for a period. That was enough to make a full-scale hunt well worth the drive to the Midlands. John had only briefly scouted the area, so there was still a lot of land left unsearched. Upon arriving at the site, we decided where the most likely spot should be as we plotted our strategy for the day. John decided to head off along a creek, and I told him I was headed up to the top of the highest hill around, eventually to be affectionately called Greg's Hill by my good friend. I started the long walk up the hill. As I neared the top, small iron signals sounded off with every swing. Then a nice solid hit, which turned out to be that brass frame to the old coin purse. At that point, I thought to myself, I better slow down, maybe there's an old coin or two here. Two feet away, there it was, a very smooth, repeatable sound. Was it silver? An old copper? One good shovel full had it out of the ground. But instead of a coin, I was looking at the back of a two-piece button. Hmm, this could be good, I told myself. Turning it over, I saw the unmistakable outline of the drooped wings that are only found on Confederate staff officers' buttons. If it wasn't already good enough, a little cleaning of the back revealed a W. Dowler superior quality back mark. I called John on the radio and told him he probably needed to come on up to the top of the hill. As he topped the hill, I simply held out my hand with a Cheshire Cat grin. He knew it was on. I had just done something that every relic hunter dreams of and something I probably will never do again. I had just walked into a virgin Confederate camp. It's hard to explain the feeling of getting a good signal every couple of feet unless you've done it. Over the next few weekends, we made this camp our home. The relics range from the mundane, unidentifiable pieces of brass to half of a Charleston slave tag found by my friend John. Other finds included numerous buttons, including four South Carolina buttons, four script eyes, two block eyes, a federal eagle eye, and two eagle cuff buttons, as well as many flat buttons. Additional notable finds included an early pea garden sword, another bayonet, various gun parts, and much more. However, just as things heated up, they quickly cooled down, as the signals became less and less numerous. The tract has since grown back up after being clear-cut, and my good friend John has moved away. The time me and John spent on that hilltop in the Midlands of South Carolina, and the relics we saved for the future will be one of the best memories I've ever had, but there will always be that curiosity as to what we may have left behind. 